Hey everybody, I'm Kaho. I'm here to talk to you about low code design in Next.js at the Next.js conference. Just quickly about me, um, I'm from the State Library of New South Wales, Australia. I work as the DX Lab technical lead there. And I also have a design background. Started out life as a designer, doing uh, print and uh, web design and industrial design as well. So low code design. If you're not familiar with low code design, um, think of it as a way of visually building your software. So using a, some UI, um, user interface to um, build code, to write code for you. It's become quite popular in, um, in the last few years. I'm here to talk about it in Next.js. Um, so I've just been working on a proof of concept that uh, brings visual development to Next.js. It's a browser-based tool, so it works um, entirely in your browser. And it means it helps you change uh, styles and more without touching any code. So the, the reason for uh, me investigating this project is I've noticed that there's been a few problems with design and developer handoff over the years. Um, a typical workflow starts off with the designer sending a uh, finished kind of file, sketch or Figma, um, Photoshop, whatever, to the developer. But quite often, um, there's a few problems, such as it not using the real data. It uses mock data, fake data. Also, the file isn't totally fluid. It's just kind of these static sort of renderings of what it could look like. So um, there's a few issues there. Also, things like hover and focus active states, quite often they're not um, in the file as well. There are also many inefficiencies with handoff. Uh, this design file, many, many hours have been uh, spent on this design file. I've, I've done these myself. Also, it takes a long time to implement it in code as well. And a bit extra time for pairing just to kind of make sure uh, you fix the things that the designer um, notices. So it feels like double handling. The solution? Let's just get rid of handoff entirely, or let's try to, and design directly in the browser. Design with production code. It means that there's no back and forth between design and development. It's just one workflow. So I've got a bit of a demo to show everybody, and it uses Next.js and Tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS is a utility first CSS library. So this is a Next.js page, really simple. It's got an image, some text as well. And I have a UI that I've been working on that lets you make updates to the contents of this page. So let's just say I um, select trumpet. I can also select the date as well and also the image. And I'll select this text here. And I can increase the font size of it. Make it a bit bigger. I can also make it um, more bold. Actually, I can change the contents of it as well. This talented gentleman is not only playing the trumpet, he's playing the piano as well. I can change the background color as well. Let's make it a little bit more vibrant, like that or like that. We'll just stick with that for now and update our text color. Perhaps like that. So I'm making changes in the browser, but they're actually being changed inside the code as well. So let's just say, let's keep an eye out for the um, class names here. And this is Tailwind CSS, by the way, so it's all utility CSS. Makes this project a lot easier to um, build. Um, and I will change it to yellow. And there we go. Text just got changed to yellow. 
I can also um, have access to a layers panel. So I'm able to do things like this and select a div and make a few changes like so. Um, change the margin and the padding as well. And once again, these changes are reflected in the code as well. So hopefully you can sort of see how, how much time could be saved if the designer just had access to this and was able to just make these changes without having to harass the developer to, to do these um, changes. I've got another demo here, and this is a little bit more um, involved. So the code here just got a little bit of a, an array with a couple of things, and then um, I have a demo card component, right? So this is all within the page. So let's go inside the demo card component. And I'll open up my um, UI, zoom out a little bit, and say I select this text here. Once again, keep an eye out for the title, okay? So right now it's white. So I've got this selected. I can make it green, I can make it um, blue. And notice that the other component is also changing because they're the same instances of um, the different instances of the same component. So how is this possible? I'll give a little bit of a breakdown. I use React's debug data and you can access it with uh, code like this. Target instance debug source, very, very useful. And it looks a bit like this. So for that particular element, um, the line number and the column number of that bit of code um, is described and also the direct um, absolute file path of the component, um, which is super, super useful. So I send these to the API and I'm using Next.js's API routes. And then in this API, um, it has access to the local uh, hard drive. So I use FS module to um, read and save the file. Also use Babel and Prettier to make changes to uh, class names and um, add elements as well, and also uh, update the text. And then once the file is saved, fast refresh is triggered and the state is um, all kept. So there's a few advantages um, to this approach. The design file becomes the code base, so there's no more sketch files that sit in a hard drive anywhere and never to be touched after they've been passed on. Um, there's no handoff, so this uh, there's no time wasted with um, between developers and designers. Everything's in version control, so it's all um, in Git. Also, uh, these changes, design changes, designer might have an idea and want to, want to see it. They can deploy this um, and get feedback from stakeholders straight away. Also uses real data and conforms uh, better to any design systems that are in the code. There are, of course, some disadvantages. Um, the designer needs to know CSS pretty well, I think. Also, CSS can be a bit restrictive for design. It's not like you can just move things around, so it might restrict um, creativity a little bit. And also, of course, we need to set up a dev environment uh, with this particular setup. So for this project, um, I'm still just working on it. It's a very early prototype, just to, to see how, um, how it works. I'd like to explore um, other React um, framework such as Gatsby and create React app and also investigate other front-end frameworks such as Angular and Vue and Svelte. Uh, thanks so much for checking out this talk.
Uh, here's the code, and please check it out. Uh, feedback, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to go anywhere, but it was a fun project, and thanks so much for Next.js uh, and Vercel for uh, inviting me along. And the sides were made with uh, React Spectacle. Cool. Thank you.